Okay, hi, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Vondran Litigation Warrior. This is Attorney Steve. We are going to be talking in this video about the motion to compel arbitration. Okay, so this pops up. Let's just give you the common example. You're, it's usually arises in consumer purchases. For example, a purchase at a car dealership. You come in, you sign the forms. There's usually like a little arbitration clause in there or could be a big arbitration clause. And they, you know, they tell you, hey, you know, sign there, sign there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to just get you to sign the arbitration clause. Why? Um, a lot of companies would rather go into a private arbitration, which is, you know, it's not a court of law. It's got a private arbitrator who's going to decide the dispute. OK, so these can be shorter, less expensive than going to court. So and they may have favorable um, arbitrators, you know, not to say for sure, but, you know, I think a lot of companies, um, <laughs> you know, the arbitrators are concerned about getting the future business. And that usually comes from the company like the dealership. OK, so there people have noticed before that maybe perhaps there could be some leanings one way or the other in arbitration. So sometimes consumers get these and they want to get out of them. They want to get into court. They want their their day in court. They want a jury trial. OK, you're not going to get a jury trial with a private arbitration. They want their case to be told. They want their day in court. So really what you're dealing with then is filing a lawsuit. And I'm going to help us out here today with the help of if you don't get mad, give them the finger. Saying, let's talk a little bit about this. So you're going to be filing the complaint right here saying, hey, you know, I got a bad raw deal. It's a breach of contract. It's fraud. It's financial elder abuse, whatever the case may be. And they, this would be based on your sales agreement here. So you sign the sales agreement, check your clause, make sure you actually signed it. Sometimes they say, well, we have to arbitrate. And you say, well, let me see their signature. Ah, oh, I can't find it. You know, OK, maybe they didn't sign it. If they didn't sign it. They're not going to be bound by that. This happens a lot in real estate contracts as well with real estate brokers and, and the parties to the contract is they agree to arbitrate, but you got to look at the box. Did they? Did they check the box? So let's just say you had an arbitration clause. You filed a complaint. What's going to happen in these scenarios is the opposing party is going to come in here. MTC, that stands for motion to compel. They're going to be filing a motion to compel and trying to seek to stay any discovery that may have been served. OK, so for example, um, usually when we file a complaint, we're going to get into the discovery uh, pretty quick on in the case. We're going to be sending requests for admissions, special interrogatories, setting depositions requests for productions of documents, maybe serving subpoenas. There's a lot of discovery that goes on. Well, what will typically happen in a motion to compel arbitration is this party is going to come seek to stay that while meaning they don't have to answer while the court's deciding on this big old motion to compel arbitration. OK, so that's typically what you're going to see. So they file your motion. You get to oppose. You get to raise the various issues and I'll just put them right here. Here's kind of the issues that you're going to be facing. Now, there's a case called Dean Witter, the Dean Witter case that I put over there. And that case says, look, in order to compel an arbitration, two things. OK, and so this is would be what you would be wanting to dispute. But one of the, one or two or both or the third thing that I have here, is there an agreement to arbitrate? That's talking about this. Did we agree? At the time we were contracting, did we agree to arbitrate? Was there a contract to do it? And now remember, a contract requires offer, acceptance, consideration. OK, there's some defenses to contract formation where you say there was no contract formation. I was incapacitated. Um, I didn't have the capacity to sign. Um, I was under duress. Um, the, the terms were unconscionable. We'll talk about that in a second. And there was a mistake, a mutual mistake of fact. OK, so there are defenses that preclude the contract formation. And so these are some of the things you might want to be arguing in your case. Um, but you're going to oppose. There's going to be a hearing right there. And the judge is going to make these decisions. I'll just touch on, on this real quick, the unconscionable. And usually in California, where I practice, 
And by the way, this is general legal information only and not legal advice. Do not rely on this. This is just some general information to get the, get the conversation going here. But unconscionability requires two things. Substantive unconscionability and procedural unconscionability. Now, what's that? Substantive unconscionability is basically these harsh one-sided terms. Here's, what you, here's how it's going to go down. Take it or leave it. DDD, really harsh one-sided terms. Look at your arbitration clause. Ask yourself, is there something harsh and oppressive, unfair about the terms? Take a look at that. And so that's one. You need to show substantive unconscionability, but also procedural unconscionability and that would be the procedure of this process is it kind of are the terms hidden or is it a is it a uh, weird um, unintelligible process those kinds of things so if you're going to be going down that road uh, which i would suggest is probably a fairly tough road um, you have to be able to make the case with facts you need to get your facts into your opposition motion get your facts because remember they're here in their motion to compel they're likely going to have a copy of the arbitration clause um, they're going to have your complaint they're going to have some declarations maybe request for judicial notice they're going to be trying to tell the judge hey judge everything was laid out easy peasy lemon squeezy so that's what they're going to be doing okay so these are your arguments you may have some other arguments unique to your case but this is how you have to, to raise them. And again, you're going to have the hearing and you're going to have some, oftentimes a tentative ruling. That's the day before. Go check that out and see if there's anything that you can add to it. Maybe something the judge didn't quite get right or didn't quite get your argument. So be prepared on that. Get a case law ready if you have to. And the, the party that's moving for the motion to compel arbitration could be requesting a statement of decision. If you're not going to grant my motion, tell me why. That way, perhaps I can appeal it if I need to. That sort of thing, okay? Um, but anyway, you may see some citation to the Federal Arbitration Act, FAA, we call it. Um, not much I'm going to say about that, but this gives you a general idea of what you're dealing with with a motion to compel. And if you have any questions, you can go to our website at vondranlegal.com. That's vondranlegal.com. And we hope that you like this episode of Litigation Warrior on Attorney Steve's Litigation Whiteboard. Okay, I got to get running. Phone's ringing off the hooks here. Have a great day. We'll chat again.